I don't have I don't have too much to worry about. That's true. You are in probably the best situation for any sort of storm that might come through. But um, I, I'm not overly stressed with at least the wind uh, strength. I mean, if it picks, if it got stronger by the time it got here, then yeah, maybe I'd be concerned. But um, from our experience, it seems to get a little weaker as it as it you know comes across. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. The forecast only called for 35 knots or so. But suddenly, black sound became very black, and we could see a wall of wind and rain coming towards us. I wanted to let out some more chain, but only had enough time for maybe 10 feet or so before the wind and rain caught up with me. Well, it's kicked up a little more than what we expected. Actually, bring in the gloves, I think. Make sure the uh, board is well tied The wind was howling. The next thing we knew, the big green sailboat in front of us started dragging. With nobody aboard, we couldn't do anything but watch. I was driving the boat to relieve the pressure on our Mantis anchor, which was only rated for 50 knots. We would have needed the size up for today, because we also started dragging. We watched the green sailboat go close to our friend's boat, and then it kept drifting past, thankfully. Next thing we knew, the red sailboat, which was behind us, started dragging too. It was a mess. Going straight at these. And we were in touch with friends who were in White Sound, just a little north from us. And over there, half the mooring balls were gone. People were cutting loose from them while drifting. Nobody was having fun. I think it's slowly easing up, actually. I hope so. Thank God we're caught on that mooring just right. My dad is looking out for us. We could tell that the red sailboat was pinned to our friend's boat and that the green one had luckily gotten stopped on some old dock poles. Uh, that was definitely more than 30, 30 knots. That, I don't know what that was, but maybe 50. Andy gave us 10 seconds notice. Thanks, Andy.
When things finally calmed down enough, we went to see what happened to us. It seems like, as we were jacking, we caught on a mooring ball by accident. It got wedged in between our chain and the snubber and wrapped around somehow. Corey tried to tie us better, but there was still a lot of strain onto the chain and the snubber, so he ended up only adding a second snubber to the actual mooring ball so that we wouldn't go any further. This is just insane. We were not expecting this at all. And we knew there was some wet weather coming in, but this is just like way more than we expected. We were just saying on the radio, oh, we think it's gonna be 30 knots, and then all of a sudden there's a wall of water. And, I mean, we dragged, I didn't even have time to get out enough scope before it happened. And honestly, we didn't have a whole lot of room because there was a red boat right behind us. Unfortunately, that red boat is already dragged into another friend of ours. And the other boat that was in- it looks like the other red boat is free of his red boat or his boat. So hopefully it's not causing any damage. And so far it looks like it's calming down a little bit. We have lightning which sucks and is always scary uh, with the big mast. But right now I don't have the engine in gear and we're staying in place. We got about 70 feet of, of scope out roughly. And like I said, I would have loved to put out more, but we didn't have the room. And uh, thankfully, I think we caught on that mooring ball. I can't go, I don't really want to go to the front right now with the lightning to check it out, but this is just insane. I'm so grateful to have an engine this year. Like this, we would have been so screwed. We would have dragged into a boat. Actually, there was a green boat that we just saw like flying just next to us. I'm so happy that it didn't hit us. I ended up getting stuck in the dock, seems like, so that's good. But on White Sound, where another one of our buddy boat is, they, they say they lost their outboard, dinghy outboard just sunk. And apparently there's a boat sinking over there and like all the mooring balls are just ripped. It's like, whew, it's insane. It's like 50, 60 knots of wind I think we had. Just dressing back up, getting ready. Cause um, I mean, there was a broken transmission from our one of our buddy boats that's at White Sound, which is really close. Um, but they believe the weather, there's more weather coming behind this one, which the radar does stipulate. Um, like you do see that there's more rain because the radar does show, you know, your, your accumulation of rain. But I don't know, we'll see. Because uh, from our past experience, the worst was always when the front came through. I'm tempted to start the engine again, but I don't know when it's gonna come. And so far, fingers crossed, knock on wood, it keeps, star it keeps starting. So I might just wait, because I mean, who knows when the next, the next one could come. But um, I have a slight suspicion that I'm leaning more towards that the worst of it is over and it'll just be a lot of rain and this kind of wind. That's what I'm hoping. I'm way shakier than I think I should be. I don't know what it is, I'm a little cold. Got the sweater on, so that might help, but um, yeah, I, I guess. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna need a beer after all this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> after, I just cracked one, man. Yeah, I might, I might need one to get rid of these shakes, I don't know, between the, uh, the cold rain and uh, just being a little uncomfortable in that scenario, I think uh, a beer sounds good. So, we made it through the, that craziness. Um, I think we ended up being really lucky, I, I have a feeling we might have caught this mooring, just in case it gets gnarly again later, because it wasn't really calling for it to be this calm. I'm going to tie the mooring since now I can access the top of it because it's not 
going crazy outside. And uh, we'll be mooring and anchored because I won't be able to check out the anchor until tomorrow morning. But we have a casualty. You'll see it better probably tomorrow. At least it didn't damage her further. But it looks like it's bent pretty significantly that way. But it'll still work, I think. The wheel might not turn anymore. Uh, I might. It's really not too bad, considering. It's not like, you know, it's, the chain starts oh. right there. So it's, it's not rope, which actually I can see. The chain is pretty good quality. Following day, we had found out that the winds had, had gone as high as 78 knots, and it was recorded as a tornado force zero. Well, that was quite the eventful afternoon and evening. Luckily, everything was much calmer the following day, and I set out to untangle the anchor chain from the mooring ball we accidentally hooked on the night before. But what a tangled mess that was. When we dove on the mooring ball to go see what had happened to our anchor, we could see just how bad the holding was. Maybe we should have listened to some of the locals that had warned us about the bad holding in the anchorage. The holding here is only good for light winds only. But now it's time to pay the owner of the mooring ball. Only $20, well worth saving our boat. The next rainstorm had us worried, but it passed quickly, without any trouble. Still, I was on edge waiting for it to get worse. just on the other side of the government dock because it's close to high tide and that's when you want to get out of here and Corey managed to pull up anchor and it's still there <laughs> and the holding on the outside is a heck of a lot better than the holding on the inside I mean we backed down on our anchor at uh, 2000 rpm and uh, I mean it seemed like it was holding fine which it was we weren't moving but um, you know almost 80 knots puts holding into a whole new perspective. That's when you really want good holding, good ground. And from the video that I'll overlay here, you probably can tell that it was just like a uh, sod field. There's very little good holding down there. And we just dragged right through until we caught that mooring ball, thankfully. decided that it was time for some drinks or water at the Blood House. So let's have some drinks and food and have fun with the gang. <laughs> Everyone had so many stories to tell about our tornado for zero. White Sound was a mess, a cat had gotten blown into the shallows, our friends outboard went underwater, Half the moorings were gone or had drifted away. Now it was time to enjoy life and relax a little bit by this. Not good. I have an aircraft. 
What's your you're magic? Good? Are you the, that long term of an investor? No, I just, if it, it was down six yesterday. <laughs> well, I already have some. No, you have some. Well, guess what? That's what I said. So. So it's just me and Andy oh got soaked. <laughs> what, you and Andy? You and. That's so cool. Bioluminescence! Thanks so much to Jenny for the camera. We get to get some night shots now. It's kind of different. I've, I've never been able to film at night. So now we're going to be able to provide you guys a, a whole different angle anytime we're outside. I don't know how the audio is, so this will be a good test of that as well with the motor running in the background. Super cool. All right, well, I've got two halyards tied to the bow. What I'm trying to do is relief, release some of the tension off the forestay while it's nice and calm today and change out the pin that's holding the forestay in place because it just looks a little bit rusty. And um, ever since Jenny's experience with losing her forestay and then de being demasted, I really don't want that to happen. So if I can uh, you know, get rid of any weak points that look kind of questionable, I'm gonna try to do that. I've never had to do this though while the rig was still under tension, so I might actually have to loosen some turnbuckles. Luckily we have an adjustable backstay, so I, I was able to loosen that all the way until pretty much its max point here, uh, which made me realize that this wheel is really jammed, so we might have to loosen that up a bit. But if you come to the bow, I'll show you what I got hooked up. So all these cotter pins are supposed to be stainless steel and this one has no rust on it but this one's just rusted to crap so clearly it wasn't very high quality stainless and as soon as you try to bend them back they, they snap really easily so definitely good to remove this anyway even though um, yeah you can tell it's just really brittle metal now see look a just chunk of it just snapped off just trying to pry it back so yeah, anyway, if they're rusty, I would recommend removing them. Probably should have removed this one sooner. All right, I just got a little bit of electrical tape. I'm just gonna tape it around the threads here so I know where the turnbuckles were. And I don't have to try to guess and figure out my tension and everything. So at least I'll have it within a, an eighth of a turn or something close to, close to it, I believe. Now I'm just gonna release my two backstay turnbuckles and hopefully, that will give us enough leeway to pull more of the weight forward. And then I should be able to relieve the tension, at least this is the plan, relieve the tension off the forestay enough that it's loose there and I don't have to force it down because the last thing I want is for one of these boats to come by and I have to hold the forestay in place while we're bobbing around because that's just no fun and kind of dangerous. So hopefully that'll do it. So you can see this guy here don't know if you can see him, but he's pretty rusty in there. And it looks like where this bar is, it's dug into the steel a little bit. So this is what we want to try to relieve pressure on and see if we can change it out. And I'm not sure if we're going to be able to relieve enough pressure. And of course, the waviness is not going to help either. I was trying to find the calmest of days to do this. But that's a new one, I think, that will fit in there. It's just whether or not we can loosen off the stays enough to relieve the pressure completely. The other problem that I'm noticing is this was always like this. Somebody must have ran into a dock before we bought the boat or something. But for some reason it's way closer to the actual roller now. So that's going to make it really difficult to try to pull the, the, bow, ro the bow roller or the stay forward to try to get it lined up with the pin and everything. So anyway, this might be a more work than I initially thought. Tight. I'm just afraid to pull the pin out until I have it loose enough that I can just slide it in. Well, I'm not really relieving a whole lot of pressure off of it right now. Um. All right, well, we couldn't really film it because it was all hands on deck. Alex was grabbing the old pin from the backside. Andy was pulling on the uh, head stay down towards this chain plate, and I was trying to tap this guy in. And it all worked out flawlessly and wonderfully. So uh, we're, I'm very glad this is back in. Now I'm just putting this safety pin here back in and I'm probably gonna clean up some of this rust at the fr front here. 
but this pin looks way better than the old one. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Burgers and fries. I'm so excited. <laughs> and the other awesome thing is that we have fresh buns from the holy bread bakery in town. So that's gonna be super good. Bon appétit. Mm, yummy.